Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan Bailey and I am from the website Plagiarism Today which can be found at PlagiarismToday.com and today I'm really struggling on what I want to say. Um, I've had 24 hours or so to absorb what happened <clears throat> um, over the weekend. Basically uh, the news really started breaking about the Charles Carrion lawsuit against Oatmeal and um, Indiegogo and the American Cancer Society National Wildlife Fund. That kind of was breaking literally as I was processing the video for yesterday. Unfortunately, the video didn't get online due to some problems with YouTube. Um, I'll be putting that one up probably Wednesday instead. Uh, it's not very time sensitive. But the point to this is I've had 24 hours to absorb what happened in that, and it hasn't helped me reach a conclusion of what I want to actually say. Uh, to recap the whole saga as quickly as I can, um, Oatmeal is a web popular webcomic created and operated by Matt Inman. Uh, Inman discovered some time ago that many of his comics were appearing without permission and or attribution on a site called Funny Junk, so he initially started working with him in private, but when that didn't uh, pan out and the problem continued, um, Basically, he had a war, a very public war of words with Funny Junk, the two sides exchanged some barbs, he made some funny comics about it, and that was really the end of it. Ten months passed earlier this month, um, Funny Junk had an attorney by the name of Charles Carrion send him a threatening letter demanding removing, removal of certain defamatory, allegedly defamatory statements on his site, and that he paid $20,000, uh, and damages. Um, I've read elsewhere in a couple other articles, including an interview with Charles Karen himself, that basically Funny Junk's alleging certain advertisers have avoided working with Funny Junk because of the allegations um, in uh, fun in Oatmeal's post and the fact that Oatmeal is two and three. If you if you Google the word Funny Junk, at least it was. Now it's probably you know two through hundred or something at this point. Thinks this reason number hell it might be number one. I should really check this. Uh, but anyways. Where was I going with that? <laughs> well, Inman decided to fire back in a pretty creative way. He said he didn't want to deal with it, and he wasn't going to pay the money. But what he would do is he launched an Indiegogo campaign to raise $20,000, and then he would in turn donate that money and split it between the uh, American Cancer Society National Wildlife Fund. And the idea was, look, let it go. It's all done. I mean, charities get money. You don't get it. And the other side of this was he would... Uh, send uh, Karen, the attorney, a picture that he drew of uh, Karen, I believe it was supposed to be Karen's mother, uh, seducing a bear. It's a very uh, salacious, but yet obviously a, a lampooning image here. And the other side of the coin was he would send a picture of the money as well to prove that it was real. Um, so yeah, that was the uh, basic idea, and it seemed like that was the end of it, but Karen did not let well enough go. Um, on Friday, he filed suit um, against Inman, against Indiegogo, for hosting the campaign alleging Indiegogo was knowingly hosting an illegal campaign, and against the American Cancer Society and against the National Wildlife Fund, the last two being the ones that I'm pretty sure is not going to earn him any friends. Now, I did read one article that was interesting, one theory that was interesting as to why he would sue the charities, even though they hadn't actually done anything other than be potential targets for the money, and the reason was to make sure they were listed as defendants in case they received the money, in case they profited from this um, supposedly illegal fundraising campaign, so that he could in turn get the money back, or get it directed to him. And that's the explanation, and that unfortunately doesn't, still doesn't put him in a much better light, but hey, it was an attempt on Reddit to try to explain an irrational action. Um... And that's where we sit right now, and the honest truth is I don't know what I want to say about it. I just, I, I can't fathom this, because I want to know when, and I'm, Inman himself said this in a recent blog post, I think he actually put this pretty well, he wants to know when this dispute became, went from being Funny Junk versus The Oatmeal, to being Funny Junk versus Oatmeal versus Carry On versus The Internet. When did it go that extra mile? Because even when the Indiegogo campaign was launched, it was still primarily oatmeal and funny junk. It was still those two. This lawsuit by Carrion has nothing to do with funny junk. It's a pro se lawsuit. He's representing himself and his interests. Funny junk has nothing to do with it other than the fact they unleashed Charles Carrion on the oatmeal 
and indirectly brought about this whole thing, trying to resolve what was probably something that didn't need resolution. So, I mean, it, it's amazing for me, because it seems as if Carrion is trying to get himself out of a hole with dynamite. And, it, yeah, he might be able to get out of the hole, but he's going to be in a million pieces when he does it. Um, it, it's a really a frustrating situation, and I feel bad for the charities involved. I feel bad for uh, the partisan office, even though lawyers are lining up around the block to provide pro bono help at this point. It's incredible how much free legal help he seems to be getting now. Um, even with all of that, it's still a distraction. It's still a time sink. It's still a money sink. It's still a problem. That's true of the charities, too. Um, that's part of it. The other problem, I think, is, and the other thing I want to say is, that Inman also said this, and I think I said it in my post, at least indirectly, but I, I think what Carry On needs to do is take a break, take a walk, a few weeks away, get his head on straight, come around and focus on what's really important. And I, I mean, I've got a, a story that's related to it, but it's not nearly as serious. Cause when I first started plagiarism today, I wrote an article, um about, um, I'm trying to remember how it was, uh, how, what the title, I can't remember what the title was now, just put things in perspective even a little bit more, um, but it was about the new piracy, and it was the idea, uh, it was quoting an article and reporting on an article elsewhere that was referring to this heavily, um, the, the new plagiarism, I'm sorry, not the new piracy, the new plagiarism, about how um, several sites out there will, you know, block quote these huge swaths of text, and they'll attribute it, but they'll do so in a way that it's very unobvious and really doesn't help with SEO and doesn't attribute in critical ways. And the idea was, this is this, you know, a modern form of plagiarism? And that was the question. Well, I was, like I said, reporting on a previous post and talking about, you know, what they said. Well, my post hit Slashdot. In fact, it was the first thing on Plagiarism Day to hit Slashdot. And the title of the Slashdot post didn't really catch a lot of the nuances, and it was a very complex article that a lot of people didn't really read or address the issues. And a lot of it was bad writing on my part. Own up to it. It was I, I was an a, it was amateur hour for headline writing for me. Um, and a lot of it was just you know the nature of Slashdot for knee jerk reaction. Like, so all social media, I suppose, for knee jerk reaction shouldn't be unfair to Slashdot. Um, well, my inbox was getting pounded as a result of this. I was getting dozens and dozens of emails, comments out the wazoo. Uh, and I'm sitting there like 5 o'clock in the 5, 6, 5 30 in the evening, just pounding away, trying to respond to each one. And it's an impossible treadmill at this point. The, the comments are coming faster than any human being can respond. I, I respond to one, four pop up. You know, it's an incredible situation. And I'm getting frustrated, and I can tell. I'm getting tunnel vision on this. I can see that I'm not focusing correctly. And that I'm, even though I hadn't said or done anything that I regret at this point, I'm fraying. And I'm fraying emotionally. I'm fraying from a, from a focus standpoint. I'm really starting to slip. And it, this has gotten to me. And at this point, my significant other, who, Crystal, wonderful woman, uh, stepped in and said, okay, we're going to go get dinner. Just grabbing my, <laughs> just here at this Peter, um, we're going to get dinner, and I'm like, no, I'm not, i got to stay here, i got to focus on this, no, 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 we're getting dinner, he yanks me up, takes me, we go get a very nice dinner at a restaurant, um, in fact, on the way to, uh, to the restaurant, I find it on my phone that the, um, my site has succumbed to the Slashdot effect, too, um, so now, in addition to everything else being said about me on Slashdot, uh, via email, now my site's down, so, um, <laughs> Basically, I um, I get to the restaurant, have a very lovely meal, uh, and about a quarter of the way through it, it's like a cloud lifts in my mind, and it's like I'm seeing things clearly. It's almost an, a magical thing, and then I start laughing about it all. It becomes kind of funny, and then I realize, you know, I don't have to deal with this today. I can come back at it. I can write tomorrow, and tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new opportunity. This is just the beginning of this conversation, and it got off on the wrong foot, but maybe we can correct it later, but we can't do it right now. Laugh at it, it's a joke, it's a misunderstanding, and walk away. And that's exactly what I did, and I think Carrion needs that exact same perspective. He needs to step away. Probably it's going to take more than a dinner out to do it, but maybe a vacation, you know, to another town might help. He's in Arizona, 
getting to be hot there. Maybe you should head somewhere north. Just a call. Well, anyways, way over time on this one. Wow. Uh, story time put me on now over 10 minutes. So on that note, everyone, thank you very much for your patience. This is Jonathan Bailey signing off.